Hey guys, how's she going today? Well, I'm back again, so <laughs> back to back to business. So what's on the agenda here for today is we got our chopper back from being balanced and they also reinforced it. So they've got this uh, big bar here, full length. There's three, one here, one on the other side and one underneath here in a, a triangle. And uh, they say they do that because on these big 60 inch choppers, when they start to get older, they will uh, flex in the middle. So they stiffened it up and they've balanced it at uh, 2000 RPM to within two grams. So it shouldn't uh, vibrate anymore, I'd hope so. <laughs> you can see down there in the middle, there's a shiny new, one shiny new weight in the middle there. They've got a few all over the place, so. That's all uh, done and balanced, and we, I put these new hammers in last year, same with new stationary knives. So it's going to be uh, a brand new chopper. So I'm working on right now putting in brand new bearings. There's nothing wrong with the old ones, but you're going through all the work of uh, everything else on the chopper here, so you'd be pretty stupid not to put new bearings in. So... New bearings going in, and then I also had to go, Antoine took that off of one of the parts combines that Grandpa's there, his old 750, because I broke the pillow block, the old pillow block for this side, when I was taking it apart here a few days ago. So I had to uh, pillage a pillow block off of that chopper. So I also got uh, the shield and the handle for this side, because this chopper was missing it. So... I'm working on that. I got to tighten these up, put the lock collar on, and then the pulley goes on this side as well. And then we got to put uh, bearings and what have you on that side, but I'm not going to get anything too tight just yet because I got to make sure I've got things centered. So I'm going to go over there and put that bearing on and we'll talk to you here in a minute. This one was a little bit more fun. So I need the bottle jack here to lift things up so it centers, so I can line up the three bolts because you can't get them from the back side once everything's in place. But I've seen guys changing bearings on YouTube here before and they're beating off ever living piss out of it with a hammer and a board trying to pound it on the shaft. See how that can move right into place? That's how it's supposed to be. You use your emery cloth and actually get it so the bearing moves on the shaft. <laughs> there. I got the chopper all set back together, but the wind really, really, really picked up here in the last hour. But uh, I got the sensor and everything put back on, the pillow blocks, the shield on this end, and then our uh, second-hand new handle and shield for this side that the chopper was missing. Wow, that wind is ridiculous. So all I've got left to do on this, but it's going to be once it goes in, to uh, get this chopper out. You can see uh, from factory, they welded this piece in. They must have, uh, they must have that gap in there and they put the chopper in and then they weld this in because it's got welds on both sides and they're factory welds. So uh, we just death wheel the took the death wheel there on the grinder and cut the uh, welds off I want to set that back in there after and weld that back in and then it's ready to go so I guess I'm gonna go have some dinner and then we'll come back and do a few other things and then uh, Rob the tire man slash Rob the rotor belt guy is going to come help me change that rotor belt because I haven't got a damn clue. Hey, you see the wind shut my hopper extensions all but one on there, so. <laughs> well, son of a gun, eh? <laughs> right there be the problem, so I marked it with a red paint pen. I'll, uh, hopefully I can, it doesn't go flat too fast pump it up and I guess my list of things for this afternoon's a little longer so I guess I'll uh, be bringing that to town after dinner here so I guess I'm going to take the quad home for dinner because that's all I've got over here is this so <laughs> there we go 
Well, I'm going to take the uh, pickup off the 2188 here because we need it off to do the feeder chain and then I've got some work to do. You can see we're missing a couple of uh, feed fingers and what have you. And then the header's got to get cleaned off yet. That shit that was on it there from uh, last winter yet. Or <laughs> winter. I'm supposed to say harvest time, but it was winter, so. <laughs> So I gotta clean that all off and then these fucking combines here they got a terrible setup for cleaning your back windows you can't get in there. So I'm gonna try and get the pressure washer wand in there and clean that out. But I'm gonna move this over to where we gotta be here once I shut the park brake off and we'll get this pickup off of this unit so. We'll talk to you in a minute here. Here's the poor old worn out feeder chain. So that's coming out and then this plastic, they put this in here, kind of help it wear instead of wearing on the metal. I mean, if you ever fucking put enough material through a combine throughout its life that you're gonna wear through the bottom of the feeder housing, I'd be surprised, but it's all, uh, you can see it's all bubbled up here and starting to tear, pack with shit. It's held on with uh, some carriage head bolts here and uh, I'm not really sure what all else really holds it but that's coming out of there. He took it out on the 1682 as well. It was all bubbled up like that too so we're gonna get that out of there and get this feeder chain out. Probably not today but that's what's coming in the future here anyways so anyway I'm gonna get this put somewhere not in the middle of the yard and we'll uh, we'll keep keep on keeping on. <laughs> Well, in between working on the uh, combines here, I've been uh, loading up bales that Antoine's been hauling. He got done uh, custom cutting there. We ended up uh, that 200 acre piece where we had moved to, and then another neighbor had 40 acres, so we'd done that for him. And then uh, I'd finished up baling, and uh, then we had another neighbor call and his baler buggered up on him. He had 35 acres left here about an hour away from home here. So uh, we went and baled that for him too. So we're all done here for cutting. We got a bale for that neighbor there. And then uh, we got to bale that piece that Antoine cut there, 40 acres. So that'll probably be tomorrow or the next day that'll be ready to bale. God damn it, that bin is rattly. That's the next thing on the list there is bins, but I'm gonna go back in the shop here, out of the wind. So I've got this all done and ready to go back on. I hauled it back in here myself, but I'm not quite uh, strong enough to hoist that big bitch back up here again. <laughs> so, that's all ready to go. So what's left on here is an oil change and that bit of welding inside there and to charge the air conditioning. So hopefully we'll be done it tonight here when Antoine gets home. I think we're gonna come out here and try to finish her up, but uh, it's supper time now. So I'm gonna run back to the house and have a bite to eat. 
And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings. We got two loads of bales to bring to the next guy. That's, uh, there's bales at Grandpa's place and that our one other yard, so. We'll get that done with and that'll be it for uh, haying, I hope, for the year, so. And then other than that, 10 acres of green feed there in the canola, so. <laughs> anyway, I guess. That's where I'm going to leave you for now. Rob the tire guy drives a Ford and isn't going to make it tonight. And I'll leave that up to your imagination why. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we can, he'll make it tomorrow. And we can get that rotor belt changed. But anyways, other than that, that's all I've got to tell you. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more. Leave a comment and we'll talk to you guys here in the next one.